I'm gonna get four or possibly five displays to test right here in this video for you to see and for me to see what's gonna be best for my particular applications that I use. This is my starting point. It's the 27 inch Apple LED cinema display from 2010. It's been great and still is great. It's got a resolution of 2560 by 1440. It's 27 inch, but it does have quite large bezels for in today's technology terms. It has great speakers, has a camera, which is a bit low res these days, and a microphone. So all in all, it's a really good monitor. And when you lift it, it's very, very heavy, again, compared to today's standards. But it does the job. So I'm now looking for a new one. I want to move to 4K, because at the moment, this has to have an adapter to plug to my Mac Mini 2018 to convert it to a USB-C or a, a Thunderbolt uh, type connection. What I want to do in the future is move to an eGPU. And an eGPU will give me more power for my Lightroom RAW files that I'm dealing with, which are very large, and also for the larger and more complex iMovies that I'm putting together. Once I've got that, it then connects via Thunderbolt, the eGPU, to my Mac Mini, and then I think it's HDMI or DisplayPort to the, to the display itself. The downside with this is it doesn't have either of those. It only has the one connection, which is that display port and the old, old style. So with that in mind, let's get on with it. We've got the first two. We've got the Samsung curved CF791. It's 34 inches. It's a huge box. Um, and it's, I think this one is quad HD. And then we've got the one from Apple, which is the 4K uh, LG Ultrafine 23.7 inch or 24 inch is what they, what they call it. But um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna try out first. Stick with me and then we'll get on to the next two. All right, screen number one. This is the LG Ultrafine display. It's got a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It's small, I think. I'm not entirely sure I'm comfortable with that size yet compared to what I've been used to. Um, it's heavy as well, it's really heavy. The speakers aren't particularly good. Um, what else did I know? It does have Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt built in, but only Thunderbolt, which might be a problem actually when I want to connect to an eGPU, so external graphics uh, card, which I think you need HDMI or DisplayPort to connect to those, and then the Thunderbolt goes to your Mac Mini itself. Not sure about that, need to look into that a little bit further. Um, it doesn't have a camera. It doesn't have a microphone, of course, because of that. And uh, overall, the resolution is great. It's uh, uh, very high, but because it's a smaller screen than what I'm used to, uh, thinner bezels, but not tiny, tiny bezels. Um, yes, it, it fits in there nicely. It looks a little bit small, but because it's, it's 4K resolution, essentially, or UHD, um, it's all condensed down. So your pixels per inch will be much higher, so you can get loads of detail, but, the downside to that is that everything's tiny, tiny. So that's the first screen, done. Happy with it, the color looks great. They're actually off color, so if you go to the side slightly, uh, it goes, if you're looking at pure black, then you can see some slight light leakage on the sides, but the colors do look very good, and I'm gonna be straight onto the screen anyway, so that doesn't really matter too much to me. The next screen I'm gonna try is the Samsung Ultra Wide. All right, screen number two. This is the ultra wide screen, 34 inch Samsung. It's a C34 F79 1WQN curved screen. Now, I gotta be honest, I didn't think I would ever have a curved screen. I always thought those were for gamers, which they mostly are. Um, and I'm mostly photography editing and a little bit of video. But I gotta say, there's a kind of coolness about this. There's a kind of cool vibe about it. Um, it doesn't have a swivel screen, so you can't tilt it left and right. Um, you can move it up and down, and you can uh, tilt it towards you in, in that domain. Um, it's got two USB 3 ports on the back. I've had to write this all down because there's so much here. They're on their outputs. It's got one USB, I think it's a USB 3 on the input, two HDMIs, one display port. A um, couple of things, or a few things I've noticed out of the box. So. It doesn't power on when your Mac Mini is turned on. 
there's a power button on the back so you have to go around the back here and just press it which actually it's not too difficult that's okay uh, the audio so the speakers they're okay they, it doesn't have a microphone it doesn't have a camera um, on the audio side what I did notice is that when you switch it to come through the, through the audio because I'm connected here via HDMI the audio uh, comes through there that's fine but it grays out your audio volume so I can't adjust the volume so you have to adjust the volume by uh, pressing that button on the back again and going to the volume turn it up or down which is a bit of a faff now I'm hoping there's another way around that because that could be a pain um, it does have picture by picture so I could have my my Mac here on one side and my PC on the other side, my work PC, so I could be working dual screen. That's kind of cool. Um, out of the box, the color definitely needs attention. It's not right. It's not, I don't know where it's calibrated. There's a hell of a lot of settings in there um, to adjust it, which is great and you need that, but I think that's gonna require time to adjust. Um, not something I can do right now in the time that I've got, but I'm sure you'll get there in the end. And eventually once it's set up, I suppose you'll just fix it and keep it at that. But yeah, not calibrated out of the box. Um, also, I noticed that you have to go into the display settings to change the uh, to change it because it automatically comes as HDMI 1.4 and you can output on the Mac Mini uh, 2.0, which means you get a you can get higher resolutions. Uh, faster and things like that. I'm not entirely sure. It then allows you to up the refresh rate to 100 hertz, so from 60. But again, you have to do that. It's not like that out of the box. You have to do that out of the back of the display over here. So yeah, this is a nice one. Um, bit of a knobball, bit of a curveball for me. I think at the moment, this one could be winning it. The biggest downside, I suppose, is although I can get a lot on the screen, it's 3, 3 4, 40 in, in width it's the same height resolution that I already had but actually it fills the corner really nicely I do have a corner uh, screen there now and in this room I thought it was going to be massive but it's not actually it fits really nicely so yeah the biggest thing is probably the resolution it's not as sharp as the uh, LG one from Apple uh, the 4k it's it's good it's better I suppose than what I had but obviously it's a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. A couple of other points on this monitor. Uh, the blacks are really nice and deep, really good, happy with those. Um, and when you go off angle on this one it's really good. Now I don't know if that's to do with the curvature of it, not really sure, but you know it looks uh, like when you go off angle, not that I do much, but when you go off angle you don't get the raised blacks on this one, so pleased with that. So here's the next one. This one is the Samsung, and this one is the BenQ. The BenQ, I think, is supposed to come pre-calibrated. Uh, it's the PD 27 inch. Um, the Samsung is a 32 inch. So let's get trying them. So here we are with the 32 inch Samsung. And I gotta say, it's big. I don't know if that comes across in the surface. I don't, know, I don't think it does, looking at the screen there, but it is a mammoth screen for my office and it just seems a lot bigger even than the 34 inch that we just had here. Um, I gotta give it to Samsung, their blacks are excellent, they really are good and I tried to film this from the side so you get a kind of viewing angle but uh, and the shift of the blacks and things like that but you don't get that with this one at all. It has the best stand out of the lot so far Albeit you have to make this, you have to put the stand together, which isn't too tricky, but putting the monitor on the stand is a little bit tricky and probably need two people like I did. But this one, not only can it go up and down, it can go towards you and upwards and it can go left and right. So yeah, I would say this one probably has the best stand. Um, the colors on this one, again, very Samsung, very uh, a bit artificial out the box. Now I'm sure there are some, there's some processing you can do or some calibrating you can do on this um, or choose a different profile. So that really needs a bit of time to do that. But out of the box experience on the colors is not great, unfortunately. Um, although, you know, if you were not comparing it to anything else, then you would say, yep, yeah, they look good, I'll go with that. But when you're editing photos and, and videos, it's not, not so great, but I think it could probably be overcome. Um, doesn't have any speakers, not a huge issue, but it doesn't have any speakers. Of course, it doesn't have a camera, it doesn't have a microphone. Um, but yeah, I mean, its resolution is 3840, so it's UHD. 
Uh, it's crisp, it's sharp, and for what I need, it's really nice actually to be able to pull up uh, iMover in this case and then just pull it all the way along the screen and so you get a really nice uh, timeline all in one shot. It's better than the 24 inch that we looked at at the beginning because uh, that one was, although it was 4K, the same resolution, it was so small or it seemed so small anyway. So in this case, it's much bigger, the same resolution. So everything there is just slightly, slightly bigger and more readable. Of course, you can change the resolution again. Um, it has very similar inputs to the last Samsung, the, the ultra wide one. Uh, it has two USB 3s, it has uh, two HDMIs. What's different on this one is though, you've got an HDMI 1 and an HDMI 2. So I plugged into number 1 and it only gave me 30 hertz as an option immediately. Plugged it into HDMI 2 and it immediately went to 60 hertz. So that's uh, a key differential between this one and the previous one, the widescreen version. So I'm not quite sure what it is. That must be just the, the specs on this particular monitor. For me, it doesn't make that much difference, but uh, certainly don't want to be running at 30. So 60 is a minimum, really. One last thing on the stand. The stand on this one, the rubber foot's already come off on the bottom and they just stick on with like a glue or a sticky tape. So I've just stuck that one back on there as well. Um, so not the best build quality, but it's okay for the money. You know, this one's around about 400 pounds. What's that, about $600, I suppose. Um, it's not too bad. Final point in this Samsung, a uh, little bit disappointing. Underneath, all the cables fire directly down, or majority of them do, including the power cable. So you can see them dangling underneath. So it doesn't make for a very neat uh, setup if that's what you're looking for, especially if you're going to raise the screen up. All the cables are there for you to see. But for the money, you probably can't go too wrong with this one. We finally made it to the last screen. This is the BenQ PD 27 inch, so 2700U, that's what it's actually called. 4K HDR uh, running at 60 Hertz via the um, HDMI input. It's got quite a lot of inputs, this one. Uh, one HDMI, one display port, one mini display port, one display port out, I guess for looping through four USBs and two USB 3s via their funky adapter. It looks a little bit like a Samsung adapter actually. But anyway, it's got the best stand this one. I think uh, it takes the crown for the best stand, that's for sure. Um, it's even got a handle, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, you can hold it by if you're ever going to be moving it, which is nice. Did have to put this one together. Um, it moves in all directions, so it goes up, it goes down, it goes left and right. Uh, and it comes forwards and backwards as well. Now, the biggest thing for me on this one is out of the box, turning it on, the colors looked right. And they do say on this particular model uh, of the BenQ that it's for designers, not that I'm a designer, but it's for designers uh, and it's for creatives. So the colors are already calibrated out of the factory. The blacks are pretty good. Uh, maybe not quite as dark uh, as the Samsungs, but you know what? I'll probably live with that. Uh, it's a matte screen, it's not a glossy screen. Uh, it does have a little bit of reflection in there. Uh, Size-wise, it's the same size as the original Apple that I had, the LED cinema display, but it doesn't have all the large bezels all the way around the outside. It does have sound, albeit the speakers are a little bit not so great, a bit tinny. Um, it doesn't have a microphone and it doesn't have a camera, but then I didn't expect that either. Um, it was £424, I think, this one. So actually for the price, for a 27-inch 4K, that's pretty good. Um, I think at the moment there are two in the running for me. Uh, and it's not going to be the one from Apple, the LG 4K Ultra Fine. It's not gonna be the last Samsung 32 inch, although it was lovely to have a nice big screen. It just is a bit too big for my, for my area here. Um, so it's going to be between this one, which is the BenQ, uh, purely for its color and its sharpness and out of the box and the settings that it has for color, including HDR, uh, and the Samsung Ultra Wide, because that one definitely has a coolness about it. And even though it's 34, inches it didn't seem big in here it kind of fit um, and that one had audio as well again not great so you probably want to use a uh, another type of speaker or some speakers plugged into those so that's my review that's my test of 
five, including my original one, monitors for a Mac Mini 2018. So this is it, the final part of the video, the conclusion. Yes, I've changed my t-shirt, it's a different day, but I wanted to be sure that I got the right decision here on what I was gonna be moving forwards with for the next few years. And it came down to two, you could probably guess what they are, and thanks by the way for getting to this part of the video. The two final ones are the Samsung wide, ultra wide curved screen and the BenQ. And the final conclusion, the final winner here, they're both winners actually, but it's the BenQ that I'm gonna stick with. And the key reason for that is because of color accuracy. It is color calibrated out of the box and they just seem more accurate to me. And for what I do where I'm taking and editing uh, images and photos, um, and some more, I'm starting to color grade the videos as well, just trying to get into that. Um, that one for me ticks more of the boxes. Uh, the other one was cool, and uh, unfortunately that one's gonna be going back. So that's it for this video. Thank you for getting this far. Really appreciate that, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.